Hey guys, it's Ann over at Plan Obsessed, and today we're going to take a look in on the 55-gallon worm bin I affectionately have named Blue. He's been covered up with his bubble wrap, and also, for the first time, there is bedding and food the full length. Not so much food yet, but we'll get to there. Today, I have a very serious amount of food to go through and a couple of things that we may consider to be forbidden foods. I've got some tortilla chips that went bad that I, from a take home at a restaurant. I also have a great deal of lemon and lime rinds and I'm going to show you how I mitigate this. Now a lot of people are like, oh no, <laughs> things with oil in them and things with acid in them. Well there are ways to mitigate this. One is you give your worm some place to, else to go so that if it does bother them they can get away from it. Two, you can also put some buffer or some di diatomaceous earth or in my case I have eggshell, you can use dolomite, lime dust, any of that to kind of mitigate any of the acids that might be a little bit too much for the worms until they start breaking down. All right, well let me get you set up and I'll bring you back. Okay, so one of the problems I've just discovered is that the height of my ceiling is insufficient for me to go up high enough for you to see the entire bin when I'm working on it. So as far as I understand, I'm looking at it, uh, about three quarters of the bin is, is vis visible. So I'll try and stick to most of my work being where you guys can see me. Okay, taking the bubble wrap off. Not seeing any worms stuck to the bubble wrap. And then looking at the very top, I don't really see any worms crawling on the top. But when I dig just a little bit further down, I do see some worms here and there. Now off camera, I have continued to add worms to this system when I'm migrating them out of my finished castings. And I put about two pounds more worth of worms in here. I'll have to go back and look at my own videos to see how many we've got where. But for the most part, let me see if I can turn in just a little. This is the end where I've been putting them. Um, and I have not been putting them down here, so the next time that I put more worms in, I'll put them at that end. All right, back to the plan. So I'm just going to kind of look around and see the state of things, see if I can find where I put the food. I always mean to go back and, and look at my old videos, and I very rarely remember to do it. Here's a pumpkin stem from 2020. Uh, just kind of moving things around. One of the good things about having such a really big bin is that I get to dig around a lot more. And for longer. More better. All right, so let me continue digging through here to see if I can find the food. I seem to remember it being about center line. So I will have a look and see. Let's see, I got I got a, a carrot that's trying to grow another carrot, and I also have a worm that is hanging out on the carrot. So I think I'm getting close. Okay, I think we're getting to the worm ball part of the story. There we go. The bread and avocado and carrots has definitely made me a lovely worm ball to show everybody. Just kind of digging around here to see how much food is left and then also, you know, kind of getting an idea of what they've got and what they need. And as I expected, the carrots are 
not really doing much of anything at all. And oddly enough, it kind of smells like chicken soup. Um, you know, just the onions and the carrot and the kind of the bread um, all together seems to kind of have this like bouillon smell. It's really kind of strange. Let's see. Looks like I continue. The worm ball continues. Okay. But everything's looking nice and fluffy. Everything's looking good and moist, which is what we were hoping for. There's, of course, some of the, the paper that was on top that is not nice and moist, so we'll try and bury that down a little bit deeper. Move our little wormies over. And then the plan for today is to feed on this side a little bit more. So let me turn the camera a little bit so that we can kind of dig up this side and start maybe getting the population to choose to be at the full length. So as I'm digging through all of this right now, I'm, I'm finding a worm here and there, but not nothing like the population we just saw. So I'm going to kind of dig a trench here and see if I can not put the feeding in the middle here. Oops, see, there's a little bit. There's a few worms here and there, but definitely nothing real exciting. The bedding and everything is staying in a nice moisture, so that's good. Um, if you guys watched the previous video on my vermi bag, it was getting really dry, so I'm really happy to see that this down here is staying nice and moist, like I, like I would like it to. So yeah, just a, a few worms here and there, but nothing nothing spectacular. So let's see if we can't do something about that. So I'm just going to make sure that everything is well turned. I'm not going to add any more bedding for a good long time here because obviously there's bedding that's not been touched. So I'm just going to make myself a, a nice little tunnel here and put today's food, which is going to be what I showed you a little bit ago. So first things first, um, some tortilla chips, and yeah, I mean, they're fried, you know, so they do have grease in them. But remember, we don't just have worms in this bin. We have all kinds of critters that can eat all kinds of things. So most of us would not have any trouble throwing these into a regular compost pile because you know there's other bugs. Well, once you get to this stage of a, a compost bin, uh, most of us have realized, whether we like it or not, that it's not just our little compost worms that live in these things. And it's really good, really. I mean, we don't like to see the mites or the pill bugs and all of that weird stuff, the creepy crawlies that are not our little baby worms. But the truth of the matter is, they help. So one more little bag of that. And I'll crunch it up so that it, it's spread out over a, a larger area and also more surface area for the various creatures of the bin to get at. Kind of give them a little duff on top. And then, let's see, have more apple goo. We haven't seen apple goo for a while, but I was juicing my crab apples that my brother-in-law gave me. And... Uh, so that is going to be really fast food for them. They go through apple goo very, very quickly. But then we also have lemons, which is one of the ways that I use to preserve apple juice when I make it. And then we have our, our usual avocado and tea bags. So I'm going to make sure this is a decent size feeding over here so that it makes them want to move to be the full length of the bin. And I think that's pretty good. According to the thermometer, it is 58.4 degrees Fahrenheit down here. I'll have to put what that is in Celsius up there. But it's, it's a good, it's not so cold, my hands are freezing. I'm in short sleeves, so it's not bad. Uh, the worms are very active, as you can see. 
So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to go get me some grit. So also if you remember many of my videos I, I add grit to my prepared paper bedding. So it's not normal that I will add a good amount of grit to anything but since I am giving them weird food and this has got quite a bit of leaves which I personally did not put any grit on. I'm going to give them some grit to mitigate any of the acidity with the lemons and then also to help out just in case there isn't enough. And then we're going to cover it back up. And then maybe next week when we come to look then we will have a fabulous worm ball the full length of the big boy. All right, guys, well, if you like the video, give me a muddy thumbs up. And if you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that little bell icon. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms. And everybody, have a good day.